tiny house prepper hi everybody this is Bill with tiny house prepper and this is part seven of our shed rebuild project <laughs> in many ways I feel like this is just the project that never ends but hopefully I will be able to finish it up uh, today I just have a few little uh, details left I got to build the uh, the ramp by the door you can see that behind me and um, finish a little bit of the soffit up underneath of the eave there and a little one strip of siding on the other side and that'll be it and hopefully I will be finished at least with the outside Now when I uh, installed the door, I put flashing in underneath right here, and it goes all the way down. And then I ran the siding, that's just temporary, I ran it all the way across. I need to cut the siding away from the flashing so I can attach the, uh, the ramp there, because it, it wouldn't attach to the siding very well. It needs to be against the solid wood where the flashing is. This probably would have been a lot easier if I had done the ramp before I did the siding. But I did it this way because I wanted to get the wood protected from the weather. So I can do it this way, it's just going to be kind of a pain. Another row of flashing up underneath to really protect the wood. Now a normal 2x6 or 2x8 is the two inch is actually an inch and a half wide right here. What I'm going to be using for my decking is this, which is called five quarter board. It's only, instead of an inch and a half wide, it's only an inch wide. So this is pressure treated five quarter by six, and that'll be on top. So what I did was I put this right up here drew a line across underneath so I have the level for the board that I have to screw onto here to support the ramp. Okay, now I'm about to start on the ramp, and this is a very difficult situation here of knowing how to cut the angles against the wall and against the ground where the ramp is going to go. I've never done this before. I'm just sort of making it up as I go, but I am relying on a lot of years of experience of how to uh, cut an awkward piece of wood and transfer the angles and the measurements onto the wood to make it actually fit. So, 
let's see what I can come up with here. Okay, here's my thinking here. I'm going to draw a line straight down, plumb, to cut this angle. And then when, the, when I cut the other end, this will drop 8 inches to this point. Now down at this end, what I will do is draw a line all the way across here and that gives me the angle of the ground and after I cut that off then since this is this 8 inches same as this actually seven and a half, but uh, that means the top board here will drop down 8 inches and the, the angle should match and then that one up there will also drop 8 inches and the angle will match at least that's my thinking. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I'm going to give it a try and see how it works, and if I'm wrong, then I've messed up a board. <laughs> so now I've got the board cut. Let's see how it works. Look at that. Absolutely perfect first time. Amazing. Now all I have to do is just cut two more. I'm on a roll here. This is just about a perfect fit. Now I lapped this here so I could put screws on the end. That makes it a little stronger. But then that center one just butts in straight. So I had to actually cut an extra inch and a half off of that one so that it would be the same angle as this one. And then the one down there also laps over the end. And as I come down here, <clears throat> I put this decking board across and I was worried that there would be a gap here or that it or that it would be too high but it looks like it's just about perfect it's sitting flat there flat there and flat here so everything came out just exactly the way it should be the only problem is when I put this on here The uh, left side is a little higher than the right, and that's because the ground itself is slightly higher on the left side over here than it is on the right. Now, I debated about maybe tapering and taking another half inch off the bottom of that over there, and then a quarter inch off of this one to try to make it level, but everything's sitting square right now, nothing's rocking. You know, it all looks good, so even though it's just slightly out of level with the lower, with the right side being a little lower, it's not that much, and I think I'm just going to let go with it as it is, so I can go ahead and start putting the decking boards on. I'm kind of excited because I was, I was dreading this particular project. I thought it was going to be a real problem, but it's turned out to be not too difficult.
done and it works. I'm very happy. Now I can easily take my bicycles in and out and my lawnmower and my snowblower. It's a whole lot better than trying to lug them up a couple of steps. So now I'm ready to start on the soffit underneath of this three foot eave. Now over here on the other side, I ran the soffit this way and cut them short one foot pieces and nailed them across. But on the other side, I had to run in the soffit the other direction. If I ran them this way, I would have big sections there where there was nothing to support it. So I got to run it the other direction so I can nail it across uh, on those rafters. First thing I got to do is nail up the J-strip trim around the edges. not an easy thing to do by yourself to get the, the tongue into the groove and get the notches on the end all lined up when it's 12 feet long it's not easy I'm not going to be able to get this last piece in by myself. I can't reach both ends at the same time. So I guess I'm done for today because I'm going to have to wait until somebody else is here to be able to hold an end for me. That's a bummer. I wanted to finish this today. I did not get it on camera, 
but I did get the help that I needed to put in that last strip of uh, soffit. So now the underside there is done as well. I need to finish this last piece of siding right in there and unfortunately it's not the same width all the way across it's wider at the left than it is at the right so I measured the distance it's three and seven eighths down there and it's four and three quarters up here so I have to rip it but it won't be straight so I measured it on both ends and I marked a chalk line there so I have to rip it down with the chalk line so I just use a knife and I just score it right on the line just like this this is not cutting all the way through So once I have it scored all the way down the 12 foot lane, I just bend it the other way and it snaps right off. Just like that. Now here's the piece that I need. Now the system to attach the top piece of siding is really cool. Because now that I've ripped this off, there aren't any uh, holes here to nail it in. If you nail it in here, you're going to have that buckling problems like I talked about before. So this piece is called a cap piece or an undersill molding because it goes underneath the window sill. And see it's just kind of bent over and this is actually nailed to the wall. You can see over there where I nailed it to the wall. Now I take, this is a special tool and it puts little crimps in here. Oops, I did it upside down. <laughs> okay. You can see how it's a little barb that sticks out. Can you see that? And then this is nailed to the wall, and then I just slide that right up inside there, and it locks in place, and that little barb locks it in there. You see how that works, where that barb is? It actually just locks right in, snaps in place, and it won't come out. That way you can put up the entire piece without using any nails, and it won't go anywhere. So all I have to do is just put these little barbs with the special tool about every six inches all the way down the whole length of the piece, and then it'll snap right into place up there. So now you can see where I've got these barbs, I got them about every five or six inches all the way down the whole length of the piece. So now, if I rip this down to the right height, it should just snap right in there. Perfect fit. So now you can see how it snapped in to the top cap and to the piece of siding below it. Perfect fit. It's not going to go anywhere. It has been very hard as I've built this thing and it's taken shape to not start storing stuff in it. As you can see there's already stuff in it. There's a lot of the construction material. There's some Two by fours back there against the wall that I'm going to use to build the shelves inside and all some of my tools 
a few other things, one piece of OSB left over. I'm going to have to take all of this stuff out of here to be able to build the shelves. Now I did build it with nine foot walls because I'm going to put shelves all the way across the side, the end, and the other side. And by going up nine feet, that allows me one extra shelf up there for even more storage. So I'll have the shelves all the way around the wall, probably at least two feet deep, maybe three feet, I'm not sure yet. And then here in the center, I'll be able to keep my bicycle. I actually have three bicycles. One of them is a tandem that Elizabeth and I ride together. Be able to keep the bicycles, be able to keep the lawnmower, which is already there, and the snowblower. And uh, this is really going to solve a lot of our storage issues of necessities like that. I'm pretty excited. I did frame in for a window right here and the window is leaning against the wall but I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to put it in. I'd like the idea of uh, natural light in here and a little bit of ventilation but a window is a, is a uh, the weak link in security. If there's no windows it's a lot more secure. So whether or not I put that window in, I don't know. It's there. I probably will. We'll just have to see. I also like to plan for all contingencies. At this point, I'm not planning on heating this or living in it or anything like that. It's not really even legal. But I did put right there a framed in an opening for an air conditioner. I have no plans to put in an air conditioner but if I should ever decide to insulate and finish the insides of the walls then I can put that air conditioner in put the one window in right here and probably put electric baseboard heat in it but there's like I said there's no plans at this point that's just contingency plans for for the future if I never use it it'll be fine just the way it is So now it's finished. When you come in the main entrance to our development, we are actually the first one. I'm standing in the main entrance right now. Here's the road. So you see the back side of it. Seems like I've been working on this forever. I, I think it took me five months. I can't believe it took me so long. But when you just don't have many weekends off, that's what it takes. But I'm very happy with the way the thing came out. Notice how it's about six feet taller than our trailer. <laughs> it looks like a cathedral compared to our little trailer there. I still have to uh, do the grounds work. Seems like it just never ends. Uh, the ground's still pretty rough. Now in the first video or second video I talked about taking out the trees. You can see right there the green patch. That's where one of the trees was. That's where I buried a couple of the stumps and got it all smoothed out and grass planted and the grass is coming up pretty good. But I'm going to have to do that over here as well. And right in there is where originally it was a pond every time it rained and now it's all pretty much filled up and level and the trench there, the drainage ditch, it no longer ponds there when it rains so that's a good thing. See the ramp over here on this side, the uh, plywood where I'm going to be stacking the firewood. Okay, it works for me. So there it is, project complete, at least the outside. <laughs> Still got to build the shelves. I hope you've enjoyed this series of how I built this shed. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, please like it and, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much. Have a good day. See you next time.